Hamu, new Greg Dio, me nani, new Q Yui Takata, new Kumu, new Na, new Tabudu, new Numu Gubutu Yadawada. Several months ago, I was scrolling on Instagram and I came across a photograph that was posted by a Shoshone friend of mine. This is a corpse tag. It's a tool used by bounty hunters in the mid 1800s to clear the way for westward expansion. Bounty hunters were hired to hunt down native people and to murder them. They would often turn in the bodies or the body parts, the scalps or the literal skins of native people for payment. When I saw this, I couldn't believe that this was real. I immediately did a Google search and I found several for sale on eBay. I also found these handcuffs. They're from the Standing Rock Agency, also with a corpse tag. That's the same Standing Rock Agency from the Dakota Access Pipeline protests in 2016. As I'm sure you can imagine, I was shocked that these were available for sale on eBay. I mean, you can't even buy Holocaust artifacts or Nazi paraphernalia on eBay, but here they are. These corpse tags have on them an imprint. It says the property of the United States and Department of the Interior. They were going for a couple of hundred dollars. And so I reached out to the seller directly and I bought them. It's strange being a native person. It's strange being a native person and buying something that has direct ties, not just to the elimination of native people, but to the concerted effort to eliminate an entire continent of people as directed by the United States government. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a contemporary artist. I am a sometimes activist, always a disruptor and a member of the Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe. I use these corpse tags in a piece, a triptych called These Things Happened. And I made this because so many of the details of how native people have been hunted down and killed have been omitted from history. And history is this incredible tool of survival that native people use. And it is the center of my work. I question everything. I question colonialism and racism. I question misrepresentation and stereotype and so many more things. And my wife and I, we've been married for 23 years and we have five kids. And we actually spend a fair amount of time talking about these things in our home. In fact, my oldest kid, Sage, was pointing out the inconsistent way that American schools teach this type of history. They'll teach the first Thanksgiving, but leave out the part where the pilgrims killed the people that actually helped them. And when my son Phoenix was in elementary school and first learning about Columbus, he came home and he's like, how do you discover a place where people already are? <laughs> Needless to say, the word Columbusing is a verb we use in our home. <laughs> The end result of these historical inaccuracies is that what most Americans know about Native people is rooted in fiction. It's why Johnny Depp, a white man, can play Tonto in the Disney's Lone Ranger. It's why a pretty white girl can go to a music festival wearing a headdress and unironically say, I think there's some Native American blood in my family line. But it's why a sports team can use racial slurs and stereotypes and gross caricatures and that old Hollywood Indian war cry and state that they think that they are carrying our legacy. Erasure is real. It's the reason why 40% of Americans believe that native people of this land are extinct. Now, why would anybody think that native people are extinct? There's this word that I'm going to use. It's not often used, but accurate considering the way that Native people have been historically engaged by the federal government? Genocide. You know, after World War II, when they were doing the Nuremberg trials, it was stated that the horrific actions of Nazi Germany imposed on the 
torture and elimination of Jewish people was inspired by the way that the United States dealt with the original people of this continent. Genocide is the attempt to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. And according to the United Nations, it is defined by five specific actions. Well, let's see how the United States stacks up. Killing members of the group, done. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, done. Directly inflicting upon that group conditions of life calculated to bring about the physical destruction of that group, done. Imposing measures intended to prevent births from within that group, done. And forcibly transferring children from that group to another group, done. This piece is called The Place Where Spirits Get Eaten. It is inspired by the late great poet and philosopher John Trudell who said, protect your spirit because you're in the place where spirits get eaten. This stack of chairs with sharpened legs represents the American boarding schools. Run from 1879 to the early 2000s, Native children were forcibly removed from their homes, forced to cut their hair, forced to abandon their given names for good Christian names, and were prevented from speaking their own language, all in an effort to erase their identity. A lot of these children were abused sexually and physically, Many died, and even more were even murdered. You know, one of the first boarding schools is in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. It's called the Carlisle Indian School. And there's a cemetery there with 180 children buried in that cemetery, 14 of which are under a headstone titled Unknown. Can you imagine? These chairs are meant to represent the weaponization of boarding schools and of the schooling system. On one chair, a set of braids of human hair. Phoenix, Sage, and I, we all cut our hair last year specifically for this piece. And it's not just boarding schools that our country is trying to hide. It's also the fact that many of our reservations are the poorest economically in the United States. And while 80% of Native people live off the reservation, many of them also live in poor areas throughout the United States. And this is by design. You may not know that in the 1970s, a significant amount of Native women were forcibly sterilized without their consent in government-run health facilities. It was part of Indian Health Services, which is part of Health and Human Services. And across this country, there are massacre sites often mislabeled as battles where entire communities were attacked and murdered and even imprisoned all in the name of Western progression. In fact, here in Colorado, as many as 163, mostly women, children, and elders were gunned down in the 1864 Sand Creek Massacre. And I say as many as because after the soldiers fired on the camp, they went down and they mutilated the bodies, making it difficult to identify. The funny thing about genocide is that if you uphold its principles, the people on the receiving end of it seem to no longer exist, even when they do. Colonialism, racism, misrepresentation, miseducation, apathy, these are the tools of the silent efforts of genocide, if not outright invisibility. This piece is called Visual Blood Quantum Color Chart. It has these carefully painted plastic Indians from a cowboy and Indian set. The cabinet's painted white to be a metaphor for being surrounded. It's adorned with bullet casings and horse hair, something we use in our regalia. This piece is really about the way that non-Native people tend to gatekeep Native people. They'll say things like, well, you don't really look like an Indian. Well, how much Indian are you? And she didn't grow up on the reservation, did you? Or my favorite, you're not even that brown. No doubt the comment section of this video will be filled with comments like these. 
This piece is called Never Forget. It sounds familiar from September 11th, but it's not about that. This 25 foot long, eight foot tall painting is, it has textile patterns from my tribal community in the Great Basin. And atop these splatters and uh, textiles and drips are these matte black illustrations where I use this paint that literally absorbs light. The photos are making it a little difficult. So let me show you what's in that matte black. Many of these images are dating as far back as the 1940s, and they really embody the Americanized version of what they think we are. And the title, Never Forget, is about the way that this country, its government and its people have treated indigenous people and the way that that has held up through history and in popular culture. And in fact, many times we're told, you know, that happened a long time ago, get over it. And those same people would remind us as they continue to do every 9-11 to never forget. I believe now more than ever, it is important not to forget the sins of the past. Now, I'm not the only artist that's doing this. There's a ton of other artists like uh, Swinomish and Tulip uh, photographer Matika Wilbur, uh, J.C. Bale, a uh, visual artist, graphic designer, and muralist. Erica Wirth, an incredible author of Apache, uh, Chickasaw, and Cherokee descent. Queer Ute and Apache artist and badass beater, Chelsea Kaya. And Stephen Yazi, good friend of mine, who is a visual artist and a filmmaker and a member of the Diné and Pueblo communities. Collectively, we're creating a future where there is equality, but in that space, there's also room for non-Native people to learn more about Native people, past and present. You know, often history is told from the perspective of the victor, and that affects all of us. It's not about eliminating statements from your vocabulary like lowest man on the totem pole or off the reservation or references to your spirit animal or statements about turning your meeting into a powwow. It's about understanding the brutal history of colonialism and taking actions to repair it. Are you inviting Native people into your spaces? Are you thinking critically about the problematic representations of Native people in popular media and beyond? Are you talking about the real story of Thanksgiving? And if you're having trouble with this, if you're struggling with this, are you allowing yourself a semblance of compassion for the people who've been on the receiving end of this violence and oppression? Understanding our history is the only way to understand your history and how you came to be here, these, our homelands, for thousands and thousands of years. It's not just that Native people deserve to exist and, and tell our stories, but you, you deserve to know the truth. The truth. How can we possibly move forward without it? Thank you. <laughs>